My name is John Robertson and I am a radiation oncologist at Beaumont Hospitals. I'm also the principal investigator of the Beaumont CCOP, the Community Clinical Oncology Program, and will be speaking today about clinical trials in pancreatic cancer. First, as an introduction, I'd like to review some basics about clinical trials, specifically who designs and conducts the studies, what is the role of the NCI, the National Cancer Institute. I would also like to review some aspects of their design, and we'll talk about the phases of clinical trials. Fundamentally, clinical trials originate from one of three sources. One source are the cooperative groups. These groups are known by an alphabet soup of names, for example, SWOG, ECOG, and RTOG, but basically they're named according to the region where they started, like the SWOG, which is the Southwest Oncology Group because it started in Houston, and the ECOG, which is the Eastern Cooperative Oncology Group, or the NCCTG, which is the North Central Cancer Treatment Group based in Rochester, Minnesota. Or they're also named by the type of disease that they treat, like the GOG, which is the Gynecologic Oncology Group, or the Children's Oncology Group, the COG. Or they're also named by the modality that they study, like the RTOG, which is the Radiation Therapy Oncology Group. Another major source of clinical trials are the industry-sponsored studies. Although we often think of these as pharmaceutical trials, it is important to remember that new devices also often need testing. The last source are investigator-initiated studies in which a doctor or a group of doctors, usually at a single institution, design and conduct the clinical trial. For years at Beaumont, we've had a number of investigator-initiated studies for pancreas cancer. The National Cancer Institute provides a major portion of the support for clinical trials. The NCI is part of the National Institutes of Health and ultimately the Department of Health and Human Services and is responsible for the coordination of the National Cancer Program. They use part of their budget of over $5 billion to support the comprehensive cancer centers, the community clinical oncology programs, or CCOPs like Beaumont, and the cooperative groups that I just mentioned. Because of a recent Institute of Medicine recommendation, the cooperative groups are being consolidated from 11 to either four or five. This consolidation is still in process, and at least right now is a bit of a hamper on the development of major national studies. Studies are basically categorized as phase one, phase two, or phase three according to their goals. A phase one study is usually a safety trial. These are often drug studies that start at a very low dose of the drug and escalate the dose as successive participants are enrolled. Sometimes a study will allow any type of tumor as long as standard therapies are exhausted and the trial may try to identify particular tumor types that are promising. Sometimes that's already been determined and the study will be designed for specific tumor types. A phase two study uses the recommended dose from the phase one trial and measures the efficacy in, in a particular tumor type and stage. If the effectiveness is found to be promising, then a phase three study may be conducted. Phase three trials are usually very large, expensive, randomized trials that test at least one experimental arm as determined from phase two against the standard of care. These studies form the gold standard and depending on the results can lead to fundamental changes in practice. There are some other common phases of study design. For example, a phase one slash two study is a design commonly used to avoid losing information from the phase one trial. By its nature, there are some participants, usually at least six, in a phase one trial who are, rec who are treated at the recommended dose. By using a phase one slash two design, the efficacy is measured in these participants and they are included in the phase two portion of the study. This helps the study process move faster. These studies will include an interim analysis and won't proceed to phase two unless there's some evidence of their effectiveness. Sometimes the national groups may conduct a randomized phase two study. Although you would think that randomization means it's a phase three trial, they use this design to, to decide which of two competing experimental treatments should go forward to phase three. And the trials are not large enough to determine which treatment is statistically superior. You will also see studies called phase four. These are done after treatment is already approved, but the FDA wants the manufacturer to provide more or longer or both follow-up information. One of the things that can be done in order to find out the available studies is checking at the website of the CTSU or Clinical Trials Support Unit. This is an NCI-sponsored project to promote participation in NCI-sponsored randomized phase three trials. When you look at this, you may get discouraged because there's only one study listed. That's the RTOG 0848 trial for resected disease. 
However, when you look at the NCI website, or the clinical trials website sponsored by the National Library of Medicine, you get an entirely different impression. These websites list all the industry's trials and many of the investigator-initiated trials and return a total of 222 studies. Not all of them are treatment trials for pancreas cancer, but a lot of them are. So when looking at clinical trials, it's helpful to examine the broad categories of the science being tested. We'll also take a brief look at a couple of specific trials. These are, the broad, are basically the broad categories of scientific approaches being tested. They include chemotherapy, targeted agents, radiation therapy, and immunologic therapy, in other words, vaccines. Chemotherapy has a long history and an already demonstrated benefit in this disease. The use of chemotherapy continues to evolve, and a couple of examples of research are shown on this slide. For example, the addition of oxaliplatin is an area of active interest. Oxaliplatin is a standard drug for colon cancer and is a component of fulfirinox, which was recently shown to be superior for people with metastatic disease. So one study is looking at the addition of oxaliplatin to gemcitabine when given before surgery, also called preoperative or neoadjuvant treatment. There are also studies including oxaliplatin in the fulfirinox regimen. Even some older chemotherapeutic drugs can see more study. An example of this is a trial of albumin-bound paclitaxel, which is an industry-sponsored trial of something already approved for metastatic breast cancer after failure of standard chemotherapy. By binding the chemotherapy drug to a blood protein, albumin, the developers have found improved availability of the chemotherapy drug. Another area of active study are the targeted agents. These are called targeted because they interfere with the pathways that drive the growth of the cancer or the way the cancer causes blood vessels to grow, but doesn't interfere with the DNA like traditional chemotherapy drugs. Targeted agents are different and can have a lot fewer side effects. The use of targeted agents in pancreas cancer has already been supported by the benefit of erlotinib shown in the NCI of Canada study in advanced disease. Even though that benefit was minimal, and we can all argue about its cost effectiveness, this established the pathway and the mechanism, and there are other agents in the pipeline that are currently being tested by the pharmaceutical industry. Of note, the current national phase three study does test erlotinib when given in resected disease. There are studies of radiation therapy. This includes some very fundamental questions like the basic role of adjuvant RT. Adjuvant postoperative RT was thrown into question by the results of a European trial which found it actually to be detrimental. This study has been widely criticized, myself included, for using a well-known bad RT technique. And they may have, in fact, have only shown that bad RT was worse than no RT. Because of that, the RTOG 0848 that I mentioned earlier is testing a more contemporary dose and schedule to see if they have the same outcome. There's also a lot of interest in the newer RT techniques. These include the use of intensity modulated RT, which helps to spare normal tissues and presumably reduce toxicity, or allow a higher dose of RT to be safely given. Along the same idea is image-guided RT, which uses frequent CT scans in the treatment position to minimize the effects of daily setup variation. Stereotactic body RT and even proton therapy are being tested to see if the increased precision an increased dose possible with these treatments can improve local control, which is control of the original tumor in the pancreas. Ultimately, however, if they do improve local control, these studies will help to determine if local control actually matters. The current nationally available study is the RTOG 0848, which is also available through most of the cooperative groups. This study is specifically for people who have had a resected head of the pancreas cancer and tests two things. First, there is a randomization of adding the targeted agent erlotinib to the standard of care gemcitabine, remembering that in advanced disease, erlotinib was helpful. The second randomization is for the addition of adjuvant RT with another chemotherapy drug, 5-fluorouracil, to help make the cancer more sensitive to the radiation therapy. This is done to see if the RT helps using modern techniques. Because it randomizes twice and will answer two questions, this study has four arms, gemcitabine only, gemcitabine with erlotinib, gemcitabine with RT and 5-FU, and gemcitabine with erlotinib and RT and 5-FU. This is the study that we have at Beaumont for people after surgery. This is a trial of what is called hyperacute pancreas immunotherapy, using a vaccine to hopefully induce a hyperacute rejection of the pancreas cancer. 
Hyperacute rejection is similar to the rejection that occurs when an organ is transplanted across species. If I had a mouse kidney transplanted into my body, it would be rapidly rejected and destroyed by my immune system. This study uses human pancreas cancer cells that are irradiated so they can't survive and metastasize. They are genetically engineered to add a mouse gene that results in the expression of a mouse protein on the surface of the cell. The goal is that when the immune system recognizes the mouse protein and hyperacutely rejects it, the immune system will also recognize other human components of the pancreas cancer and be able to immunologically reject any cell with those components as well. Frankly, for years we've had a very active investigator-initiated research program studying the combination of full-dose gemcitabine and RT. This has resulted in a number of research articles in medical journals and presentations to other doctors at major national meetings. One thing that we learned is that combined RT with, uh, with gemcitabine was superior to combined 5-FU and RT. This was true for locally advanced disease, but doesn't seem to be true for adjuvant postoperative therapy. We didn't find an obvious benefit with erlotinib, although we didn't have enough people for a definite con conclusion. So what are the future directions of clinical trials? Well, one thing is that we'll have the results of the over 200 studies using chemotherapy, targeted agents, radiation therapy, and immunologic therapies. On the horizon, however, is the possibility of personalized cancer treatment. Personalized treatment is something that we will probably see a lot more of given how the price of a complete genetic analysis is decreasing. This has led to the concept of pharmacogenomics, which will use an analysis of an individual person's genetic makeup or that of their own tumor to design a personalized medicine or combination of medicines. Beaumont is at the forefront of this very active research line with the biobank. Personalized treatment may also be done in the future according to the phenotype of the tumor, which is how the tumor expresses itself. By this I mean, for example, the proliferation rate, how fast it's turning over, the oxygenation rate, and the tumor metabolism. This concept leads to something termed biologically adaptive therapy, in which the initial treatment and even any changes in treatment during therapy can be done according to the tumor biology. Beaumont is also at the forefront of this research through the Beaumont Adaptive Oncology Imaging Suite. Thank you very much for your kind attention to this talk. Here I show some of the resources available. At the top is the Beaumont Hospital CCOP phone number. Before, below that are the website addresses for the NCI, the National Library of Medicine, and the Clinical Trials Support Unit, all of which I mentioned.